How's it going guys? Welcome to today's video. As you've already seen from the thumbnail, this video is featuring Case Vestrum 120. So thanks to our local case dealership, Tobins and Cantwell have sent us out the Vestrum 120 to try out for a day here as a bit of a demo and make a video on it to show you guys uh, what we think of it and how it runs. Now unfortunately, weather's been extremely wet so it's probably not great timing because we can't go out to the fields and do anything with it. We just have a run around uh, the yard with it and um, we might get to be, do a tiny bit of loader work with it and uh, we have had the road brush on it this morning because the cows are across the road. So this is my first time driving a Vestrum. What is it? It's basically a model between the Maxim and the Farmall. Um, it's a bit heavier than the Farmall, but it's a smaller compact tractor than the Maxim. It's a little bit higher spec than your standard tractor. So this one's got a case loader on it as well. Tires on this one, I think are the standard tires. We've got 600s on the back, uh, 480s in the front. She is 120 horsepower standard. Uh, there's no booster on it, so she is add blue. Looking across the back here, we got our lift arms, uh, controls on the mudguard and our PTO, standard enough. Now, to be honest, there's more controls here than what I even know. If anybody knows what this plug is for, I'm not 100% sure. And there's a couple of other different outlets here. I presume this one's a free throw return. There's three manual spools on it. So it's just cab suspension. There's no front suspension on it, but it is quite smooth. I did have it out on the road and uh, it was very, very nice and comfortable. I have seen these Vestrums with front linkage on them before. So let's have a look inside. This one, of course, is a multi-controller. Oh, I think all the Vestrums are multi-controller armrests. So in the cab here, um, we got a lovely ceiling here. We can we can close this if we want, um, you know, to keep it for the, for the sun or whatever. But you can simply open it and you have great visibility up in front of you to see the loader. We got some storage here in front of us. A nice big window all the way around, all one piece. Now. You can see the wiper goes all the way around, covering the majority of the window. It's pretty nice. It's the small things. Uh, all of our uh, dials and dash here is on the pillar. Then we got our Bluetooth radio, all our lights, air conditioning. There is even a little sunroof on this, which is quite nice. That's not on any, it's only, it's only a tiny little one. And multi-controller armrests, so we got Everything is pretty much here at our fingertips. It is manual spools, so we have our three manual spools over here. I know you can get them with electronic spools if you wanted to. This is our joystick for the loader. It's an electronic loader joystick. Uh, and it's very nice, it's very quick. Um, which is one thing, I, usually I find loaders and tractors are very slow. This one's quite fast, so uh, I do like it. Of course, I'm a man who's used to driving loaders and 4CXs, so I do prefer them over tractors and loaders, but this electronic control is very nice. I feel like this button is used, not on the, it doesn't work in this tractor because she has manual spools, but from my, what I think this is, is that if you had electronic spools, you could flick this button and this joystick could be used to control spools at the back instead of the loader. I think that would be a really, really nice feature for our flail mower that we use for mowing underneath the wires. Um, if that was all, usually I'm kind of flicking with two manual spools at the moment, but if that was on uh, electronic spools and you can put it onto this joystick, that would be really, really nice. Um, and then you got some extra dials under here. It is the Activate transmission. The one thing about the, the transmission, uh, compared to like our 150, which is also a fully power shift, uh, the, this one seems a little bit more stepless. It's a lot more smooth, particularly between the ranges. Um, there's, there seems to be an overlap in the ranges. Um, so you could be in the B range, you go all the way up to B8. 
but you could be in B6 and you could switch to C1 if you want. You don't have to go all the way to B8. So there seems to be a little bit more overlap and it's very smooth between all the ranges of the gears as opposed to your standard gearbox. There's a little bit more of a jump when you change range, a little bit of a pause. One thing we're gonna show you here is with this transmission is the brake clutch feature. So I can simply just put my foot on the brake and it will also activate as a clutch. It's held the tractor, so it's not actually trying to drive. The brake has acted as a clutch as well, so I haven't had to push the clutch. <laughs> she does take off if I do do the clutch. Um, so we're gonna try that again. So I can just hit the brake. It will stop if I let go of the brake, it'll go again. Very useful for something like bailing or hedge cutting where you're kind of going to be going and stopping and going and stopping um, a lot. Another feature I really like is on the road, this has a 40k gearbox, but it kind of has the gears to go higher than that. So normally on most tractors, when you go out into the road, you're going to put it up to in the highest gear and put it to the full throttle uh, to get up to your top speed. That means your tractor's running at full revs burning more fuel and often when it comes into a hill or something if it's pulling a load it's going to put the tractor under a bit more pressure she doesn't have any extra push to give it the power may kick in on different tractors but she can't increase the revs from what she's already at this tractor it almost has gears to go faster than 40k but electronically it's limited she actually sits at about 1600 rpm when she's on the road so you go up into that final gear and she just holds the revs. If you come up to a hill and you're pulling the load, it'll increase the revs to keep you at the 40K. But I like that feature. It's just gonna save you a bit of fuel when you're on the road. 40K gearbox, if you're gonna do a lot of road work, you're probably gonna want a tractor with 50K maybe, but it is a very nice feature. Right, I've just pulled it up right beside R100. Let's give them a compare. Obviously, 100 is 20 horsepower short, but they're very similar in size. Practically the same height. Uh, obviously, the bigger wheels on this one. But you can see she's nice and compact, like that 100. That 100. They're practically the exact same size. Just more power and bigger wheels, and obviously a loader on this one. Quite easy uh, to use the joystick. It's very smooth. Uh, the up and down is quite fast. Uh, the tilt, maybe not as much. Okay, now I am not giving her a fair test with regards weight because I do have the brush on the back, but you know, she doesn't seem, there seems to be plenty of weight in the tractor. Maybe if I had, if I was lifting bales now, it would be easier to tell, but often with a lot of tractors, they can be quite light in the back and you need to have a weight or something.
after using the loader a bit, you do kind of get pretty get used to it pretty quickly, and uh, it is very nice to use. I feel like it's very a tractor that fits a, a more specific need. Uh, it does give you, you know, nice power. Like you can get this from 100 all the way up to 130 horsepower. Uh, so the Maxims are that bit bigger than the old Maxims, bigger than this tractor. So if you wanted that extra power without going into a, the bigger tractor, maybe if you're limited with space or maneuverability or something, maybe the smaller tractor might suit still having the power. Now, I don't think it is, the lock is as good as our 100, but there is bigger tires on this, so that's probably what's holding it back. And then if you're looking at going smaller than, if you want to stay smaller than the Maxim, Far, I haven't drove any of the farm all which would be the next series down but as far as I'm aware they are a bit lighter than the best room so uh, depending on what you're doing you may need you might want the extra weight that the best room offers without going for the bigger tractor without the best room it's probably a big jump up from a farm all to a maxim so obviously for myself we're not in the market for a tractor we're just demoing it, demoing it for fun and for all of you to see it uh, I think it's a lovely tractor, it's very comfortable, it's very nice to use and lovely and compact but yes there seems to be good weight in it and power. That's all for today's video guys, thanks very much for watching, see you in the next one.